13. We didn't spend a huge amount of time on this, but it was in the homework, and it's a nice application of geometric series. Our goal is to take this and write it as a fraction. And any decimal can be written as an infinite sum. But this doesn't usually get us much of anywhere. Repeating decimals have the property that when you write them as an infinite sum, the series is geometric. This is 23 over 100 plus 23 over four zeros, uh, 10,000 plus 23 over a million and so on. You see this 23 gives us two zeros, we add two more digits, two more zeros, add two more digits, two more zeros. Um, this is geometric. To go from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, we're multiplying by one one hundredth every time. Our initial value, that is our first term, is 23 one hundredths. And this sum is A over 1 minus R. Um, and that's 23 over 99. Uh, this is 99 over 100, and the 100s cancel. 14 is a radius of convergence. Um, Radius of convergence is going to be done pretty much always, I'd say, using the ratio test. The ratio test lets us investigate um, convergence or divergence using a limit. So a sub n plus one. So the convergence or divergence depends on whether this limit is greater than one or less than one. And because we've got this variable x, it might be that for some values of x, the limit is greater than one, and for other values, it's less than one. So if we rewrite this and we align our terms, four to the n plus one over four to the n, 
x plus three to the n plus one over x plus three to the n n factorial over n plus one factorial. This is four. This is x plus three. This is one over n plus one. This limit is a zero. It's always less than one. So this always converges. R equals infinity. I think that was probably a mistake. Um, you should probably expect when you do a problem like this on the test to have a finite um, radius of convergence. So let's tweak this problem a little. So New problem, we solve this, the radius is infinity. Suppose we'd got into the last step and we'd been confronted with this limit. This limit now has X in it. This is going to one, this limit is four, times the absolute value of x plus three. Now you'd have more to do. This series would converge when this is less than one. So you'd have to set up and solve an inequality. Three is a uh, 12 fourths. And this is where this, um, the hypothetical series that gave us this converges. And um, the radius of convergence is half the distance from here to here. So from negative 13 fourths to 11 fourths is two fourths. The radius of convergence would be one fourth. The last problem is pretty tedious, to be honest. Um, I hadn't realized it when I posted this, and it wouldn't have mattered. I'd have posted it anyway. But this was given as a take home test for some reason. So that's why it's you might have found problem 15 to be quite lengthy. I asked for the first four non zero terms, but that ends up being something like the first eight terms. And I wouldn't do that to you. I did that here because students had more time to more time to uh, work through this. And I, I don't normally give take home tests. This, um, this was given during COVID when, when we'd all been forced to uh, transition to remote learning. So that's why that's why this test was administered that way. So the first term of a Taylor series is 
f of zero, then f prime of zero over one factorial times x minus pi in this case, raised to the first power, plus the second derivative, not zero, sorry, the center of the Taylor series. Um, the second derivative at the center of the Taylor series over two factorial x minus the center squared. And that pattern keeps up. Here, well, our constant term is negative one. Our next term is zero, which makes this whole thing zero. That doesn't count. We're looking for the first four non-zero terms. We keep going. The second derivative is the negative sign. The second derivative at pi is positive one. Um, the sign is negative one, and then this cancels. So this gives us a one over two factorial times x minus pi squared. And you just keep this up. The third derivative is zero. The fourth derivative is negative one. The fifth derivative is zero. The sixth derivative is positive one. And let's see, one, two, three, four. That's four non-zero terms.